Team, keep it clean. DeAndre Hopkins to the Ravens is still alive. It's still alive right now. Because on the Pat McAfee show, and you know, hey, Pat McAfee plugged in, man. This dude done went from a punter, being a punter, to being plugged in, having his own show, dropping, breaking news, being on WrestleMania, just doing everything. So shout out to Pat McAfee. But on his show, which features Pac-Man Jones on there, they, they will listen to a bunch of teams and different possibilities and destinations for one DeAndre Hopkins. They talked about, oh, if he will go to the Chiefs, a lot of people will be upset. Uh, because like Patrick Mahomes and DeAndre Hopkins, like that's a cheat code. It don't make that. They just won a Super Bowl with uh, with who? MVS with uh, Juju Smith Schuster, McCole Hart. So if you add DeAndre Hopkins to the Chiefs, <laughs> filthy, filthy. But um, Pat McAfee, he was asking. He asked Pac Man Jones, like, hey, what 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 are your sources telling you? And Pac Man Jones said, hey, out of all them teams that you mentioned, you forgot one. You forgot one. And that's the Ravens. He says the source is telling him that it, it could maybe still happen. It could still happen. DeAndre Hopkins to the Baltimore Ravens is still alive, and I love it. And I told y'all, like, look, man, this would be a dream for me. But, and I know some people shoot it down immediately. Oh, that's not going to happen. We just paid Odell Beckham Jr., baby. Well, guess what, baby? Ravens like finagling some money this year, right? Do it one more time. Do it one more time. Go, Raven, stick your chest out and do it one more time. I dare you. I dare you. I'm, I'm challenging y'all right now. Go get DeAndre Hopkins. Man. See, this reminds me of, obviously with this whole Lamar contract thing, with the Jalen Hurts contract thing, there's been so much back and forth and compare and contrast and this and that and how many contracts was it, or Lamar offered, how many did, did he turn down? Obviously he was offered multiple contracts because Ravens are not going to be like, hey, Lamar, there, there you go. We're going to offer you one contract. And then Lamar like, oh, no, I don't want that. And then they're like, okay, we tried. No, it's going to be back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, but there's been a lot of dialogue, discourse, discussion uh, about what Lamar Jackson was offered to what uh, Jalen Hurts was offered and whatnot. Now, obviously, Jalen got his money now. So a lot of people looking at Lamar sideways like, hey, you got offered a really good deal. But a big difference with those two, with their two situations. One big similarity, they were both questioned a lot. They were both questioned a lot on what they could do, how they could perform, uh, what type of success they could have in the NFL. They were both questioned a whole lot. And they even came, to, came into the league and even played for a year, and, and there were still a little bit of questions here and there. But the Philadelphia Eagles, they did everything that they could do to get those questions answered. They, like, really made it happen. You saw what they did with Devontae Smith drafting him high. But then they weren't, like, you know, they weren't just like, you know what, we're not just going to give you one of your friends that you knew from before, that you know from college. We're not just going to give you one of your friends, but we're going to give you an established veteran wide receiver that's not past his prime. We're going to give you an established guy, or an A.J. Brown. Now, it did come out. I didn't even notice. I, or if I did know it, may, I didn't remember because y'all know my memory is bad, uh, it, especially with, with the Steelers trading for Allen Robinson. I didn't know that the Eagles, they were close to signing Allen Robinson. But... Um, then they end up, some end up happening, and then they end up just going for A.J. Brown. Obviously, it worked out. Uh, and who knows what could have happened if Allen Robinson would have went there. But anyway, with A.J. Brown, he was an immediate difference maker. And he just continued everything that he was doing over there with the Titans. He just continued doing it with the Eagles, and, and, and maybe even better because he had even more around him. He helped Devontae Smith be better. He helped Dallas Goddard be better. He helped um, their, their running back be better. But he helped, most of all, Jalen Hurts be better. And that has been the biggest difference. Because I know there's been a lot of people comparing, like, hey, Jalen Hurts just made it to the Super Bowl. Well, oh, Lamar don't deserve that money. Look what Jalen Hurts just did. And I get that, but at the same time, I don't. Because the Ravens have never loaded up like that on offense for Lamar Jackson the way that Jalen Hurts has been loaded up for. So that's why we continue to say, whenever we have the discussion about wide receivers, 
Especially what, what they did with Odell. Great, great job, great job. I mean, you still got Bateman coming along. You still got Mark Andrews. And you got J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards sticking around this year. Still got Pat Ricard, who is our true number one wide receiver. But Odell Beckham may have something to say about that. Bateman may have something to say about that this year. But if you could really, like, load this thing up, really load it up, and go get a DeAndre, go get a DeAndre Hopkins, too. Now, again, this is stuff that they should have done years ago. They should have been did this stuff a long time ago. But it is what it is. We're here now. We can't be stuck on the past, but the past has a lot to do with the present. But anyway, if they can get DeAndre Hopkins, that could change so much for the better. So much for the better. And again, another conversation that people will continue to have, and, and I get it. Trust me, I do, because it is a real good conversation that needs to be had. What about Rashad Bateman? How would Rashad Bateman feel? Because I know a lot of people feel like, hey, if, if the Ravens get DeAndre Hopkins, then some people feel like that Rashad Bateman could be out. Rashad Bateman could be traded. Especially after his whole thing uh, on Eric DeCosta on March 2nd, on the infamous Lamar Jackson trade request day, the private trade request day. Some people that feel like hey, the, that Rashad Bateman would either ask to be, to, to be escorted out or he would be escorted out <laughs> by trade, via trade, not kicked out of the building. Well, technically kicked out of the building, but I would hope that that wouldn't happen. But, I mean, y'all know how stuff goes in this day and age in the, in the league. But to have three receivers like that, like a DeAndre Hopkins, Odell Beckham, and Rashad Bateman? Oh, my goodness. Now, another thing to think about, yeah, uh, somebody brought it up yesterday in the live stream. How many footballs would there be to go around? That's a lot of targets for, I mean, that's a, not a lot, well, it's a lot of targets, but it's only one football per play. What about that? You can't keep everybody happy, can you? Well, I mean, what are they trying to do? Are they trying to break receiving records? I'm sure they wouldn't mind breaking receiving records, especially Odell Beckham Jr. with how his contract set up. But what about DeAndre Hopkins? What does he want to do? He already said, hey, I don't need a pay raise. I don't need a pay raise. That does not mean that he don't want to get paid now. He said, I don't need a pay raise. I just want to go somewhere where I want to win. That's it. I just want to go somewhere where I can win. That's it. So, I mean, this has been a weak link on the Ravens for a long time. The wide receiver position. I would love if the Ravens just supercharged this thing this season. L literally supercharged it. Because that's exactly what this would be. If they got Hopkins and obviously got Odell and kept Bateman too, please, Raven. And you still got Nelson Aguilar too. You still got Duvernay for now too. But it's, it's almost like you, you almost feel, at least me, you almost feel like not everybody would end up staying. Not everybody would end up staying. I would want everybody to stay. I, I, would, I would all the receivers. Y'all know me. But I almost feel like somebody would be the odd man out. Because who's... I don't know. We'll see. But hopefully we'll see. We'll see. But, but yeah, man, it's, it is exciting to think about. Uh, it's exciting to think about the potential. It's exciting to think about the, the possibility. It's exciting to think about just that, like, because it's still real. It's still real. Like, I, I, I try to talk myself out of it. I, I have people, when, when they send me a message or something, oh, do you really think DeAndre Hopkins to the Ravens could happen? Say, hey, anything possible till it ain't possible no more. Do I think it's likely to happen? I don't. But keep hearing all this stuff, man. And I would love if this thing ended like the Odell Beckham Jr. thing because it's the same thing. Kind of, sort of, right? Because with Odell Beckham Jr., and, and obviously this thing went on for almost a year, but with Odell Beckham Jr., kept hearing stuff. Oh, Ravens interested. Oh, Ravens went to his workout. Oh, Ravens keeping in contact with Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, Ravens this, Ravens that. And after so long, it's finally like, case closed. Ravens got Odell Beckham Jr. Yes, let's go. But now recently, too, remember when that, the, the three receivers that were named that the Ravens were checking in, checking in on was Odell Beckham Jr., Colin Sutton, DeAndre Hopkins. And then I remember Pac-Man a while back on the, uh, the Pat McAfee show. He listed five teams that were interested in DeAndre Hopkins. One of them was the Baltimore Ravens. And now, again, He's back on there saying it again, that DeAndre Hopkins to the Ravens, it, it, it could still happen. So I, I, I'm, I'm like, 
It's like you want to think like, oh, well, nah, I, I want it to happen, but I, I don't think it's going to happen. But that's how I felt about Odell. And you see what they did with that. Ravens, hey, feel free to shock me. Feel free to surprise. Feel free. Have at it. I would love it. Love it. And it would do so much for your quarterback, too. Mike Lombardi, I think he was on the Pat McAfee show. And he doubled down on what he said on his podcast. He's like, yeah, hey, yeah, Lamar asked for DeAndre Hopkins and Odell Beckham Jr. He asked for both of them. He doubled down on it. And I'm like, yeah, there you go, Mike Lombardi. Stand 10 toes down on that. I respect it, and I love it. And I hope that it's true. So I, I just hope that now, I hope that the Ravens, they can deliver on this one. Because this would be one of the best deliveries that we ever got. It would be a great package. And I was talking to a couple of people today, and I know people have asked, hey, how could this work with the cap? How, how could they fit DeAndre Hopkins under the cap? There's a couple of different ways now. Obviously, there's a lot of restructuring you could do. You don't want to do that, but, hey, if you want to go all in and you really want, you want, really want to get DeAndre Hopkins, hey, you might have to do that. Just in case Lamar don't, don't sign yet, you, you may have to do that. You, you, gave, you gave some of DeAndre Hopkins money to Odell Beckham Jr. But it's, it's all good, man. You, it, when there's a will, there is certainly a way. Well, one of those ways is Lamar Jackson. Because if they can come to an, a contract extension with him, depending on how it's structured, that could open up a lot of money. That's not the only way. That's a big way, but that's not the only way. But that would certainly lower that, uh, what, it's like a 32 mil cap hit right now. That they, they, they could get that lower, but again, you, know, you obviously know with Lamar, you, you got to come right. You got to come right, or <laughs> don't come at all, because Lamar just obviously ain't accepting anything. He turned down different deals and whatnot, and we're still here now. We're still waiting on what's going to happen next. And, I, and I, it's unfortunate. I've seen a lot of people just, they, they, they turn their back on Lamar. And I think people, I think their uh, frustration it's sort of misplaced. And then there's some people that's just, they, they, they tired of Lamar, unfortunately. And some people that's like, oh, I'm over Lamar, I'm over it, da, da, da. But I think it's a lot of those people, I think they're, 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 uh, their frustration is misplaced because I think they're just tired of the situation. I don't think they're tired of Lamar, but I think they're tired of the situation. And they're tired of how long it's been taken and whatnot. They're tired of hearing all these stories and reports and whatnot. They just, they're tired. So they, they end up being like, you know what? Because you know how when some people get upset, some people get upset, like, you, you could uh, you could have one of your friends or something like that. Have one of your friends, call them on the phone. Hey, what's up, baby? What's going on, man? How is everything? What are you calling me for? What, what, like, what, what's, pro what's wrong with you? I don't want to talk to you right now. Bam! Well, not bam. That's old school. And they hang up on you. You're like, hold up. Now, what? Like, what? I'll, I'll just call and say, what's up? I'll just call and say, hi. But then your, your friend calls you back a little bit. Or they send you a text, cause you know, don't, don't nobody really like talking on the phone like that no more. But they hit you up and they're like, look, I frustrated with my girl, frustrated with my kids, frustrated with my job, frustrated with my family, frustrated with money, frustrated with health, frustrated with so many different things. And my apologies, I accidentally took it out on you. So I had some misplaced anger. That's on me, my fault. That's what I think is happening with a lot of Ravens fans. They have a misplaced anger towards Lamar because of the situation. And I, somebody said it best recently. Um, not sure if it was in the comment section of a video. Uh, I think it was in the last video. Uh, somebody talked about if you were at your job, would you devalue yourself? Would you just take any old raise that they would give you? Especially if you've been working hard. You've been trying, you, you, you just been working your tail off. You done had some slip ups here and there. You done called out a couple times here and there. You done missed some time or whatnot. But you've been working your tail off and, and you have shown that you, you're, you're great at your job. And, but, but your company hasn't even given you all the tools to make you the best that you could possibly be, but you still excelled at your job. And you're like, hey, I'm ready to get paid. I I'm ready to see the bread. I'm ready to see my money. So what's up? 
and they give you something, you're like, oh, okay. Uh, no, that, I need more than that. I, I think if, if we would put ourselves in the shoes of a lot of the players, because I know like fans, with the, I know how it could be. I see how it could be every day. We talk to Ravens fans every day. We talk to NFL fans every single day. So I get it. But I think if more fans put themselves in the shoes of a player and really try to relate to the players and really try to understand more, then I think they would have more em empathy and more sympathy uh, for the players. And I know some people like, empathy, sympathy. For these guys are making hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm not having any empathy for them, man. So I, I, I get it. They are on a much different tax bracket and pay scale than most of us. But that's... That's the best I could do. That's why on here we try to uh, put it in terms where people can relate to, to different situations that a player may be going through, a team may be going through. We try to liken it to something that could happen in, in, in our lives. That's more normal for us. So, but it is what it is, man. So, we'll see what happens. Ravens, you know, I'm rooting for you. Happy to get DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> Root, hey, do it, man. Do it. Do it. And with Lamar, rooting for him, happy to get his bread too, man. Just hoping all this stuff could work out. That'd be beautiful. Everything could just work itself out. And patience is 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 key here. But I mean, obviously. But if everything could just work itself out, and then next year at this time, it would be beautiful if we were talking about how the Ravens. Wow, that was a great season. Ravens won the Super Bowl. Like they finally did this, that, and the third. And they won the Super Bowl. My goodness, that would be great. Because that would mean when it came to being in the playoffs, Ravens would never get put 